It's DragCon weekend in New York. No. It's DragCon weekend in LA and Eurovision in Europe. And guess what, y'all? We still got work to do. It is time to go over the looks for the premiere. You ready, baby? Baby, I was born ready. You already know I came out the womb just bootlegging up. <laughs> Bootleg opinions. With your new gorgeous hair and extension, of course. How was DragCon, by the way? DragCon was sickening, girl. I walked the pink carpet with Miss Dabbers. She was a true star. You yeah, see hi, see hi. I saw the videos and the photos. You were so f***ing extra for no reason. <laughs> Mama, I'm always extra. Y'all know this about me. I'm team too much till the day I die. Extra with an extra X. Now, on this season, who are you excited to see? You know, I like the older queens okay the more established queens i started watching season one so i'm just excited to see them return and really get their redemption my top four queens that i'm excited to see would be my sister darian lake of course season six is in the house we're looking forward to monica beverly hills and jessica and then i think i'm probably most excited about seeing jimbo destroy the americans <laughs> remember the first time we ever did drag race canada we put you through a Ringer, that was the episode that I realized that you are a true bootleg queen girl. I don't know why you asked me if I remember anything, girl. I don't remember anything ever. <laughs> because it was so hilarious to me because I think that we did the all-star sport look and that's when we, you know, had the amazing looks. And then we switched over to Canada and that was the first episode. You were just looking for words to say. And at one point, do you remember, you said I had to get some air. And I spent many years thinking if you actually got any air or not, if you were just smoking weed. I was about to say, the air I got was probably infiltrated with smoke. Yeah. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. We can change your location with the click of a button. Surfshark? What does that even mean? A VPN, a virtual private network. So for example, where I live and where you live, our friends in the UK, Australia, Canada, or anywhere in the world cannot watch what we watch and vice versa. Ranging from movies, documentaries, TV shows, and more. You name it, baby. Oh my gosh, a VPN? Tell me more! It is absolutely safe to use, even on public Wi-Fi. And with one subscription, you and your friends can use it in multiple rooms, on multiple devices, and pay only one price. No, that's just crazy, girl. I'm ready to sign up. You've got me hooked. So sash your way to the link in the description and get yourself three months free. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Well, baby, I'm about to sign up and get clicking on that button. I'm about to switch my location to the UK to see what our friends are watching. Click. Oh my god, that's what they're watching. Did you know that? And it's been three years since she still doesn't know Surfshark and she's still signing up. You better work, Curl. That is a true bootleg queen. Did you see the comments? They said, how many years has she been asking about what the f is Surfshark and she still doesn't know, girl? I don't know, but I know now. Thanks, Yui. Did you say Yui? Oh, speaking of, there was another video. You were about to say YouTube and my name at the same time too, but you said it so quick where you combined both words together, my name and YouTube, and you said, Yui! <laughs> I was like, oh my god. And of course, we kept that in. As we did with the season 10 review, which if you didn't watch, click the link right here, or here, not for sure where you click on YouTube these days. Yui! But we are gonna have to take this with a grain of salt. And well, speaking of doing things quick, let's get on to this since you were an hour and a half late and you didn't want me to be exhausted. So, <laughs> chop, chop, chop. Oh, do you know why I was late though? They changed my schedule. I was supposed to host the viewing for Eurovision up a little bit later, but then they switched the schedule on me, so that's why you had to flip it. Well, let's speed through, baby, and congratulations to Miss Noah Kirell with Eurovision. I'm so oh, happy yes! for you. Oh, my God. Team Unicorn. Yes, I actually took a video when I was announcing her too. Love Noah Kirell. Yeah, well, she actually made a video for me, so <laughs> not to brag, but I'm kind of a big deal. Well... She sent me a fruit basket. <laughs> Lies, the only fruit I see is you. Let's start these looks now! <laughs> Don't you worry, baby. We're gonna make it very painless for you. It's a mini challenge. They have to do two fabulous runways. The first category is Famous Then. Glamorous looks inspired by years gone by. And in the second category, Famous Now. A look that embodies modern day fame. First category, Famous Then. We first up have Alexis Michelle serving you Norma Desmond realness. Love it. The fur is full and even the little bow on the turban is crystallized. I enjoy this look on Alexis. 
I love this look too. I think she looks gorgeous and classic. I love her shape. I feel like this season she's going to be giving us all the body, oddy, oddy, and I'm here for it. I too love the smoky eye and I love a turban. It's always so great when you don't have to wear hair and you can just throw on a little turban and hit the runway. I agree. The color choice is beautiful. It's giving me a classic champagne, sparkling, bubbling delight, and I'm here for it. She's ready for the shower, y'all, even though that's not the intention. She is actually an unofficial queen of green. Did you know that? I did. I have enjoyed some libations with Miss Alexis many times. <laughs> At one point, did you see that video I posted? I said, if it ain't green, I ain't what? And it just went over her head, and you commented right away, and you said, my drag, right? Do you remember that or no? No. No. Okay, fine. I don't know why you always ask me if I remember something, girl. <laughs> How do you get through life and not remember anything? I don't need to remember anything when I'm always living in the future. Oh, she's always living in the moment, just never the past. What is she green? Well, Tamar, have you not watched the show? We wore your favorite color. We're wearing green not because it's St. Patrick's Day, but because in celebration of Alexis Michelle. Because if it ain't green, Alexis Michelle ain't what? <laughs> but you know what? I just had to put this on because the girls were in dance costumes and I have worn this leotard to dance all over the world. Just say interested. Interested. Can you say interested? <laughs> interested? Okay. Because <laughs> if it ain't green, I ain't what? Interested. Alright, next up we have Miss Kana Montrese serving you foxtails and fur and old Hollywood glamour aside as well. Hair to the side, very well done because we still see the big chunky pageant earrings. Very great shoulder pieces, very expensive foxtails, and there's so much of them. The slit on the dress is at the right length, even trimmed on the slit as well. The attention to detail is impeccable over here. And the breast area is very well done, cupping her beautifully. I agree, this is another fabulous look. I mean, those foxtails must have cost a fortune and they really look like it. They look so expensive. And I love this black velvety gown with, and I love this black velvety gown with the embellishments of rhinestones, specifically scattered around her breast area to really draw attention to that, as well as the slit. I too think the hair is perfect. I love that we're showing off a neck and we're giving a gorgeous earring. I think she absolutely slayed this. Next up is Miss Heidi in Closet serving you a reference and also a tribute to her grandmother's porcelain dolls. I love this aesthetic on her. Although it can look a little bit costumey, but she dragged it the F out with her material choice on the fabric. The selling of the makeup absolutely sold it. Though I don't know how it goes back to famous then, but I do enjoy this look overall. I disagree. I think the makeup is so cool. It's almost like a porcelain. I just said I like the makeup. Yeah, but you said you don't get it. No, I don't get how the porcelain doll relates back to famous then. Because it's something from the past. She's broken out of her shell. I totally get the reference. I think it's cool, and I love okay. the Instagram version of it because the makeup was even more detailed. Oh, okay. I, too, think this look is so cool. Of course, it's green, and if it ain't green, as you said earlier, I'm not interested. I love the little parasol detail. And yes, it is a bit costumey, but, I mean, it's drag, so I'm here for that. I'm here for the drama. I'm here for all of it. I think she really, really nailed the look. I never said it was costume. I said I, it can recostume me if it's not done right. <laughs> We're gonna oh go back and forth. Oh my god! Right? I love how you said this was gonna be quick today, and you're already making it difficult. Because you're not hearing things correctly, girl. <laughs> no, you're not saying them correctly, girl. Well, English is my second language, and I thought that all languages are valid, even the ESL ones. Next up, we have Miss Kasha Davis serving us Lucille Ball Follies Realness, and I am so here for this look. I think she looks absolutely glamorous. I'm loving the ostrich feather headpiece and the matching ostrich feather details on the gown. I love the sequin material. It's a beautiful color that we don't see her in often, so I think it was a really smart choice. But she is giving us sort of her classic silhouette, which I think is perfect. It's very on brand for her, and I love seeing her jazzed up just like this. I enjoy this look on her, but I do want to see a little bit more embellishment instead of just sequin fabric and feathers, but she does look good. Next up, we have Miss Naisha Lopez giving us Coco sh 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 Chanel. Oh, now, hi. I have to admit, this isn't my favorite look from her. She said in her package that she was dripped and draped in pearls, and girl, all I see are three strands, okay? I felt like she needed 
more pearls, more jewelry to really jazz up this look. I think the tweed suit is nice. It fits her well, but it also feels a little bit store-bought. There's nothing super creative about it. There's nothing really transforming me into an older time era. This feels like something you could buy now, and it's just a very classic look, but it doesn't really take me back into the past. I also feel like the fit of the suit and as well as the bottom of the dress doesn't really hug her beautifully as, you know, she usually does. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I hear you. I agree. But I do want to say I really love the hat. I think that that's beautiful and I love the graphic nature of the black and white. Oh my god, that's the one note that I have as well for Nature is that I love the hat and that's about it. And that's that! Yeah. Next up, we are bringing to the stage Miss Candy Muse, serving a supermodel RuPaul realness. Now, I have to admit, this is another look for me that I don't really love, but I don't know that I love the original reference, to be honest. Really? Yeah. I, I also think the corset on Miss Candy is a little bit low. I wish she had changed the proportion a little bit because she has such gorgeous legs, and I think had she raised that up a little bit more, it would have gave an it would have given her a more flattering shape. I do love the pink and orange combination, and I do love that she stuck with the simple, classic drag jewelry. I think that really represents RuPaul well, but overall, the look left me wanting more. Did you say it's gaping? <laughs> no, I did not say anything was gaping. I think that's what you wanted to hear, yeah. <laughs> no, we'll go to the footage, girl, and we'll find the word gaping in there. Yeah. Play the footage. She has such gorgeous legs, and I think had she raised that up a little bit more, it would have gaping. It would have gaping. It would have gaping. As far as the outfit goes, I feel like it's a corset with some tool fabric at the bottom, and also I would have extended and made it even wider at the bottom as well. I like the hair and the makeup, and that's about it, unfortunately. All right. Next up is Mysterian Legs serving you Renaissance. Festival, baby, in this lavender slash purple color. I like the hair, I like the color, and that's about it, honestly. Not she serving purple people either. Oh, that you remember. <laughs> Does every purple color remind you of purple eater? No, sometimes it reminds me of purple hat, people dancing, dancing, and the people, you know that song? Because every time there's a purple look that comes up, you always say, it's giving me very purple eater. It's purple people eater, and no, I don't say that every time. If I do, please roll the tapes. Let me see these receipts, <laughs> sweet. I might not have an all nudes on my phone, but one thing I have on my phone are receipts, girl. When I die, I hope people don't find out how shady I am. Perfect, pull them out and let me see every time I've said purple people eater. Giving you Violet Beauregard realness. Purple people eater, honey. I really love how she did take herself to a purple people eater kind of moment. And we're kind of getting this purple people eater vibration. Baby Miss Jimbo is giving me purple people eater. Yeah, I'm with you. It's not my favorite look. I don't think I would have ever chose Renaissance as a look from the past because to me, it just is too festival-y. It's still something we're seeing today. This looks like an outfit you would see someone at Scarborough Fair in right now. So it doesn't really reference the past enough to me. I also think there's so much embellishment, so much going on, it's really hard to see what this look is exactly. I believe it's like a dress with a corset over it and a cape, but for me, it just looked too much like a conflama and I couldn't figure it out. My top four queens that I'm excited to see would be my sister, Darian Lake, of course. Season six is in the house. It's just too much, girl. Because with the sheer materials on the cape, as well as the embellishments of the corset, because the corset has like appliques, stones, sequin, and also the bottom of the dress, I would have done one solid color as the top so that it connects a little bit more. But yeah, didn't serve it for me, unfortunately. Sorry, Daring Lake. Next up is Monica Beverly Hills, y'all. And she is serving you Cleopatra in this beautiful gold and black outfit. Absolutely beautiful with the headpiece. It is so stunning. It is so fascinating, too. The sequin bodysuit, so gorgeous as well. Usually with bodysuits, I'm like, let's take the legs into the shoes. But I'm okay with this breakage because we do see the swirls going down from the legs to the shoe. That I do enjoy. And the cape fabric I also enjoy as well because it is custom made. You are not going to find that pattern unless you customize it. So great job. 
Yeah, I love this look. This was one of my favorite looks from the past that we saw. I think she looks so elegant, so regal. And like the judges mentioned, you can tell she really felt beautiful in this look. I love every detail from the headpiece to the bodysuit to the cape. I think it is a 100% nailed look. This is what we want to see from an all-star. Yeah, great job. Very thought out. Love it. Next up is James Manscaped, because she's always promoting Manscaped, serving her heritage. Okay, I was about to say, you said her name wrong, girl. Oh, girl, might as well call her James Manscaped. You know she's always promoting Manscaped, right? Didn't know that. Mm -mm, never seen it. <laughs> you and Angjana have never seen her YouTube video then, I guess. Have you ever seen her YouTube videos where she does her makeup, but she speaks as a man, right? But as she more and more does her makeup, it gets more and more into character. Oh, no, no, Have you no, realized no. that? No, 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 no. I've never seen one of her YouTube videos. Well, I guess this is one of the friends that you don't have from the season that we were talking about. <laughs> I've never seen one of her YouTube videos. I've never seen one of her YouTube videos. I've never seen one of her YouTube videos. Because Aunt Jenna said the same thing, too. I've seen her one YouTube where she one. featured my collection with Miss Trixie Mattel, <laughs> and I don't remember Manscaped being a part of that, no. Yeah, I might as well change my name to Yuha Surfshark. What Surfshark? I'm gonna sign up right now. <laughs> Maybe next time when we do Surfshark, you're gonna be the one reading the lines that I read and I'm gonna be the confused one. I'll be like, what Surfshark? Is it safe to use? How cool is it? I'm gonna sign up right now. Okay, Mama Moo, your low man is now served. <laughs> Who the f is Mama Moo? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it just came out. <laughs> Mama Moo? Who the f is Mama Moo? Brown cow stunning. Anyway, with this look with James, I love the hair. I love the roses. I love the swirl in the front. Now, as far as the outfit goes when she's walking down and she takes off the jacket, that's when I feel like there's a disconnect from the top and the bottom. Because the top is very sheer and the bottom is very solid and opaque. And that's when I feel like there's a disconnect. But overall, I felt like she shouldn't have taken the jacket off and kept it on instead. Then it would seem like a full connected look. I disagree. I loved this look from head to toe. I loved the reveal. I loved that she was hanging homage to her Mexican heritage. I thought the makeup was flawless. I just thought this was so fantastic. And I really loved that it was different than most of the other girls' representations of the past. What if she did sheer material for the dress? I feel like then it would have been more connected. I can see that critique, and I think that would have been a nice addition to the look, but I personally wasn't thrown off by the solid black material on the bottom. Yeah, well, you also have seen one of her YouTube videos only, so, you know, you don't care too much about James Manscaped anyway. That's hateful to say. I love her. I just don't watch YouTube. <laughs> Mama You knows everything, or in your case, Mama Moo knows everything. Mama Moo! Moo. What's that song by Doja Cat? Moo, I'm a cow. Moo, I'm a cow. How about you move on to the next queen? Because it's Miss Jessica Wilde bringing Nefertiti to the runway. And I also loved this look. You know, usually when there's someone who really slays a look before them, comparing the two together. But I think both her and Miss Monica Beverly Hills came through with the Egyptian references. I really love the metallic nature of this look. I love that giant snake on her forehead. I think the proportions are totally right, and I feel like she really sold this look. She's a golden child, baby, and I enjoy this look as well. The headpiece, I told, well, maybe I wouldn't wear it. The headpiece is absolutely beautiful, y'all. It is so fascinating, and just like you said, the snake with the blue, so gorgeous. What? I just love that everyone's fascinators or headpieces are fascinating to you. <laughs> Do you remember what we said? Well, you probably don't, but no, remember I was no, describing no. Blue Hydrangea's look, and I said, next up is Blue Hydrangea, and she's serving her blue color blue. You're like, what the f girl? <laughs> I kind of remember that one. Okay, next up is Blue Hydrangea, and of course she's wearing her blue color blue. She's very, very royal. Not you said she's wearing her blue color blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you remember one time you said, what's not looking in this work? You're supposed to say, what's not really working in this look? Do you remember? I don't. Play the receipts again. Also, what? Girl, that's like me being like, I'm wearing my orange color orange. <laughs> what? Girl. I think for me, what's not really working in this look <laughs> is that... Well, if we're, if we're being real, I think for me, what's not really looking in this work is the hair. I think for me, what's not really looking in this work is the hair. It's not really looking in this work is the hair. It's not really looking in this work. I think for me, what's not really looking in this work is the hair. And this is how you do it while being true to your own brand. I love that she incorporated her blue color blue. I think it's really just a <laughs> classic choice that she needed. 
I know I did it on purpose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with Jessica Wilds, I love the neck piece, I love the shoes, and the corset, beautiful. So much details to it, too. Great job, Jessica. What do you think, Dobbies? Do you like her look? I love it. Mama Rue, do you like her look? She loves it, too. <laughs> only you would buy that hideous bear. I cannot. <laughs> what do you mean, only I would buy that hideous bear? Bro, I went online to look at it because I love Build-A-Bear, and I saw it, and I said, absolutely not. That wig, girl, it is fried, dried, sickle to pickle. Girl, it is fried and very dry. It's almost kind of like your vagina. Now, if you saw actually one of James Manscaped's music videos, or videos, you will see that she actually teased out this hair and she actually redid the hair for this little build of a RuPaul. I bet it looked much better because if there's one thing I do know oh. about James is that she knows how to slay the hair. But anyway, next up is Jimbo serving you Marilyn Monroe. Happy birthday. To you. Ooh, stick to being bootleg. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Please stop. My earphones are going crazy right now. I'm so impressed. I just came back from Eurovision. I'm feeling inspired, girl. You're disturbing Dabbers. Even Dabber. she can hear it. Dabber just had a heart attack. Listen to me, girl. But anyway, I think with this look, it is so smart that Jimbo came out in this because not only is it serving you Marilyn Monroe in her iconic look, but she's also famous for her dress coming out like this too. Love the hair, it's very Marilyn Monroe. But I do have one issue with this look is that she is wearing a huge breastplate and it kind of distorted the plunging neckline a little bit. So since she does have big breasts, I do wish that she has a little bit more fabric over here so that it doesn't create a distorted you shake instead. Well, I have to admit, I agree with you on the breastplate thing. I know that's part of her branding, so I do think it was smart that she wore it, but it did kind of distort the look. Yeah. Otherwise, I was obsessed with this. I thought it was so creative, and I loved the way that the skirt was permanently blown out. I just thought it was very clever and creative. Last up to the runway, we have Miss La La Ree, and I think she looks absolutely spectacular. I love this look on her. I think the silhouette and proportions are perfect. I think the sequin detail with the fur is so nice, so classic. I definitely was transported back to old Hollywood, so I think she nailed it. For this look, I wish the hair was a little bit fuller. I disagree. No, I don't mean like teased out or whatever. Something I've noticed with her, with her wigs. Do you remember what you said about her wigs in season 13? You were like, I- Flat? No. One time she came out in a bald look and you said, I love the fact that she came out in a bald look because I never really liked any of her wigs anyway. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> yes, you did. Well, maybe not those exact same words, but similar in that. I'm so shady. Tape. Well, I love the bald head. I thought that was a brilliant choice and really broke her out of her shell because to be quite honest, I don't love a lot of her wigs. So I love the bald head. Well, I love the hair. I think it looks perfect and I think it's coiffed to perfection. I think it needs a little bit more hair in there because she is a tall girl. Because a lot of the looks coming up with her wigs, it's a little bit too small for her frame, I feel like. But anyway, back to the look. Girl, you saying that wearing this wig is rich. Oh, girl, I'm a bootleg queen, girl. They're on <laughs> All Stars. I deserve a pass. Yeah, puff puff pass. But yeah, with this look, I do enjoy, just like you said, it teleports me back to the decades. Teleport me to Mars! But I do want to challenge her maybe in something in the future runway is to embellish it just a little bit more so that it's not just fabric and fur. But I do enjoy this look overall though. Oh, you want to challenge her. Baby, I hate to break it to you, but the season's been filmed. So I don't know if she's going to get your challenge. <laughs> well, you know how the judges say though, girl, I want to see more. I want to see more. It's like, girl, already arrived in suitcases. What the f do you want, girl? I brought what I brought. It is what it is. God, that was only half of the looks and we're 30 minutes in. I love it. All right, next category is Famous Now, where they have to serve a look that is famous, currently, of course. We first up have Alexis Michelle, whose last name rhymes with hell, and she is serving you Kim K in this Met Gala look. She is serving you black from head to toe. This is so smart because Usually when I think of Alexis Michelle, I think of glamour, I think of old Hollywood, I think of beautiful queen. But when she came out in something like this, so unexpected, it drives me crazy because she looks so good in this. Not you said her last name rhymes with hell. You're so funny. <laughs> Nina Bonina Brown said it. 
first, and that's where I grabbed it from. Got it. She's a copycat. Okay. I'm a boat like queen. Well, I love this look. I think it's super cool, super unexpected. I did think the ponytail was a little questionable in the back, but I think she really nailed the look. And again, her body is so gorge. Oh my God, so proud of her. Yeah, and this is so smart too, because you don't have to spend too much money on this because the spandex fabric, oh, that's all you really have to get. Well, that's why she should have spent more on that ponytail on the back. But yes, I hear you. <laughs> Next up is Miss Kahana Montrese serving us a little Nas X, but the feminine version. And I am okay. so here for it, okay? Anytime there's a faux Saatchi on the runway, you know your queen is going to be going up. And I think she nailed this so well. I mean, literally the details, those fake Medusas are so good. I like really want to borrow this outfit. I love the color. I love the fit. I love the cutouts. It's just so good. I love this look. When she first walked down the runway, I got the reference right away of Little Nas X. This pink on her, it is so hot, and she gave us a feminine version of it with the hair, and when she was walking back, it was swaying from left to right, left to right, and then of course, at the bottom, instead of doing pants, she did a dress. Love the buckles, love the straps, and she looks beautiful in this. Hit the nail on it. Next up is Heidi and Closet serving you a look inspired by Chloe and Haley Bailey vibes. Love the hair, love the print of the outfit, and she looks so beautiful in this in these vibrant colors. The shoe choice was a great choice in this because it extends her like beautifully. And the piece on the back with the bow, it almost serves almost like a collar, and the back with the two pieces coming down, it is dragged up an extravaganza way because it is trailing in back of her as she's walking down. Because even when you're exiting the runway, it should still make a lasting impression. Great job, Heidi. I agree. I feel like Heidi is definitely one to look out for this season. Her looks are just nailed down, baby. This is so cool to me. I love the hair into the knots. I think that's really cool and unique and definitely references her Chloe and Bailey vibes, as you said. I love the pattern. It's so bright. It's so colorful. It's also giving me very like traditional heritage vibes. I think she just looks so cool. I really love the proportions, as you said, that big giant bow in the back with the train coming down and then that high, high leg. I just think she looks like a superstar. She is a bootleg queen too. She does know some fashion from Mama You. Or maybe she got better designers, who knows. Next up, we have Miss Alexis Michelle coming to the runway with Liza Minnelli. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's Kasha Davis. <laughs> oh, what? It's Kasha Davis. Who did I say? <laughs> you said Alexa Michelle. <laughs> well, but at first, you said, I'm just kidding. I thought, okay, you're just kidding that you thought that it was Alexa Michelle. But then you're kidding about another reference of another celebrity. Girl, you f***ed me up. Yo, this is Miss Kasha Davis serving you Kris Jenner as Momager. Okay, hate go ahead, it. girl. Hate it. Hate the look. I don't think Kris Jenner would be caught dead in this. It's giving me Liza Minnelli. It's giving me what Liza would wear now. So if she was doing Liza, then maybe it would fit the category brief. But no, I just did not like this look. I think it's a fun silhouette for her, but that's about as far as it goes for me. I don't hate it. I just don't see how it is drag race enough. It's a top and a bottom. And just like you said, yeah, this is not something Kris Jenner would wear. Because if you look at Kris Jenner, all her clothes are very fitted. Yes, she wears pants in the top, but they're always hugging her beautiful body, you know? The only thing that I saw Kris Jenner in this was the hair, maybe, and the fact that she's doing things with her phone. Because, you know, she's a momager. But yeah, this serves more of a brunch look, honestly, than a drag race look, honestly. Didn't see it. Don't like it. Not the brunch look, but very that. But you know what I mean, right? Like, let's say there's a brunch for the Kardashians, you know, that's something you might kind of wear. Yeah, Hamburger Mary's on a Wednesday. All right, your turn. Next up to the runway, we have Miss Nasha Lopez serving us Donatella Versace. And as I said earlier, baby, if it's giving Fosace, I'm full it. I love this. I love the pattern. I love the embellishments of the chain and the gold medusas. I love their long, long blonde straight hair. I mean, she's just giving it to me. She's just giving it to you, mama. Yeah, she looks beautiful. I love the yellow on one side and the green on the other. And then on the other side in the back as well, there's the green as well with the popping pink lining. Beautiful pattern with the prints of Versace and of course the signature chains. Very beautiful, Nisha. And great job with one side of the hair to the front and the other side to the back as well. Very cool. Agreed. And I love that you pointed out the detail that the bra is one yellow and one green. I never noticed that and I think that's very Versace, very un trend for what is in the now. I really think that's cool. And of course, we love a queen with a good lining. Next up is Candy Muse serving you high fashion, futuristic women 
with a corset, dress, and fur coat. I love the fur coat, but I don't know how this is really serving now unless she's walking down a red carpet. It's not specific enough for me. It doesn't read right away. Didn't like it. Don't see how it's of the future. I just, I, it just was a no for me. I really felt underwhelmed by it. I felt like her makeup was gorgeous and she looked flawless, but the look itself, it was just so simplistic and the fur coat was giving me dolls kill and we know I don't support them. So yeah, it was, it was just a okay to me. Next up is Darian Lake serving you Billie Eyelash. It is so bad that it's good. Do you agree or no? I love the look. I yeah. think it's so good. It was so unexpected. I know the judges felt like it was too pedestrian, but I'm like, I don't want a draggier version. I want to see Darian Lake doing Billie Eyelash. I think it's so fun, so unexpected. I think she nailed it from the hair to the whole gold chains. I just think it's so cool. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant. It's so bad that it's good, but this is so unexpected for Darian that it almost reads as camp and fun. It reminds me of when she did the rapping challenge for your season, do you remember? When she wears the sunglasses. Panty hose and control top D. <laughs> She's thinking about a sandwich. Next up is Monica Beverly Hills serving you Kim Petras. I enjoy the look, but it's not specific enough that it reads Kim Petras. I also feel like it could have been any celebrity, honestly, but I love the back and I love her hair. Yeah, I was disappointed in this look. When I think of Kim Petras, I think of pink. So I really thought that that is something she missed the mark on. I also don't see how the boots go with the outfit. I wish the boots were made out of the same like faux baton fabric. Cause I agree, I don't feel like this is giving me any sort of particular celebrity or particular future fashion look. It just feels very like, it could have been anybody, okay, right? It's cute. She looks good. I mean, I do love the long blonde hair, and I also agree the bag is super cute, but I just think she could have taken it further. Next up is James Manscaped serving you Jojo Siwa. Before she even starts narrating, saw the reference right away with the ponytail to the side, the bow on the hair. She sold it too, even with the hand gestures, her getting down on one knee. Absolutely beautifully done. I disagree. I did not like this really? look. I did not see Jojo Siwa. I think she should have really? a million bows and much more print and vibrancy to her outfit. I feel like Jojo Siwa is so rainbow. I feel like Jojo also always does the star on her eye. So yeah, I just don't feel like it was iconic enough. Again, this feels like an outfit from Dolls Kill. It just isn't that unique to me. I like that it's different for James. This is something we don't normally see her in. So the unexpected twist is cool. But overall, I thought the look red cheap. Okay, what would you have done differently? I would have started over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I would have done with the look, girl. It's just not for me. I feel like, A, I wouldn't have picked JoJo Siwa. B, if I had, I would have done the star makeup and I would have done more bows and I would have done like my face printed all over. You know, JoJo like has her whole car covered in her face. So like, I, I don't know. I just think I would have done something that was more over the top. Like I said, this just feels like a good performance outfit that we see on a lot of different queens. Next up is Jessica Wilde as Bad Bunny when he transformed himself into a drag entertainer. It's almost like an exact replica from top to bottom, even the hair. Um, yeah, she looks beautiful. I'm obsessed with this look. I thought it was so clever, so creative. The body, baby, is so snatched. I'm like, whoa, Miss Jessica is skitty underneath all that drag. And I love the hair. I think it's super fun and sleek and fierce and different. I just think she looks so hot. That red latex is shining and glossing and I'm here for it. I love how you say her name, Jessica Wilde. It's very Puerto Rican, yo. I thought that's how you said her name. Yeah, but most people would say Jessica in America. Well, they're whitewashed. Well, what are you then, girl? Well, baby, I'm aware of other cultures, okay? I like to, you know, reference the girls how they like to be referenced. And when she says her name, it's Jessica Wilde. So there it is. Yes, honey, she puts the yes in Jessica Wilde. Yes, honey, bootleg opinions is always very inclusive. Next up is Jimbo giving us social media realness. And I have to say, this wig is one of the most creative wigs I have ever seen on Drag Race. Now, it's kind of ugly, in my opinion. I don't think I would wear that wig, but I love the wig. I think it's so creative and it really goes with the look. 
I think the look itself is super cool as well. I love this see-through material into this big ball gown. The only critique that I have is I wish there would have been more words all over her body. I feel like she placed them, you know, just to cover the breasts and the JJ, but I just think it would have looked cooler if there was more words all over the outfit. But overall, I really like the look and think she executed it well. What words would you have liked to see on there as well? Subscribe, click the bell, other things that we say in social media. Like, share, subscribe. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, the hair, it's so clever. So this whole look, it's very punk and edgy, right? So the hair almost reads almost like a mohawk. And instead of teasing my hair in the front and doing spikes in the top, she has it as a thumb. The whole outfit's very beautifully done. It's referencing another designer that has like words on the dresses, but instead she has the word like me. And also in the back, she wrote follow. Very cool look. Next up, we have Miss La La Ree giving us the Ruli fans. Now, I have to admit, I think the idea is fabulous, but especially after seeing Jimbo's look, which was kind of of a similar vein, this felt a little underwhelming. I definitely agreed with the judges that the letters could have been executed more professionally, but I really give her props for being creative and for showing all of that gorgeous body, body, body. And heads up, sex work is work, okay? And yeah, I agree with you. This look didn't really serve anything for me other than the hair, it's beautiful. Really? See, I don't like the hair. I think the hair feels very store-bought and flat. Okay, this is what I mean. I like the hair because the hair is the only thing that I like on this whole look. That's what I meant. Right. Yeah, with this bodysuit, I feel like it's not nude enough or she could have used a thicker fabric. We can see the corset, we can see the bra, and that's a no for me. For the shoes, I would have done clear shoes instead because with the silver coming up, it kind of ruins the illusion. If she wants to do really fans, cool. Just like you said, it could have been a little bit more professionally done rather than, to me, it feels like she wrote it out, cut it out, and kind of, you know. And also, I would have done maybe like a cover-up maybe, a bathrobe or something, and she takes it off. If you want to see the rest, subscribe, girl. You know what I mean? I feel like she could have pushed it a lot more than just come out in this. I agree. I love that idea of the addition of the reveal. I think that would have been a more spicier addition. Yeah, because, you know, they're always like, oh, if you want to see more, go to my OnlyFans, you know what I mean? So it would have been more thought out, I feel like. You seem really familiar with OnlyFans. Are you trying to tell us something? Yeah, I subscribe to people on OnlyFans because I support small businesses. I thought maybe you had your own page. I subscribe to others, too. Yeah, girl, if I have a page, I will have two followers and I will make... Ten dollars, and then the pics will be all over the internet for no reason, girl. I would have been at a loss. <laughs> you could do like eating lo mein with your feet. But then, if I, but if I do something like that, I need you to come serve me the lo mein and be like, Mama, you here's the lo mein. <laughs> okay, Mama Moo, your lo mein is now ready. <laughs> Chow down. Here you go, Mama. You what? Here you go, Mama. You your oh, come, Mama. You here's your lo mein. Here you go, Mama You. Here is your lo- Stop! Here you go, Mama You. Your order of lo mein is served. <clears throat> Here you go, Mama You. Your order of lo mein is now served. You know why I kept laughing when we did that reel? Because in my mind, I kept thinking, okay, we're just gonna have a simple line for you. Okay, Mama You, here's your lo mein. But you went all the f out. You're like, okay, Mama You. I was like, why the f you're so extra for, for no reason, girl? You're just f***ing serving lo mein. Baby, what can I say? I know how to serve it up. Now, out of all these looks, who is your favorite look from the first category as well as the second category? And who would have won this ball for you? Oh, there's so many looks and you want me to remember. It's very hard. My favorite look from the first category was Miss Monica Beverly Hills giving us an Egyptian throwback. And my favorite look from the future looks was definitely Kahana Matrice giving us Little Nas X. I totally agree with you. Those are my favorite looks too. Congrats, queen. Yay, queens. You served it up. Yes, girls. Anyway, we'll see you for part two of episode one just shortly in another video. That's right. Stay tuned. Bye, guys. Mwah. Hey, squirrel friends. When one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead. I support you.